So this video is all about the autism partnership method or the AP method and that's what we do when we're working with the children here in our office and how we train our staff what to do. And over the years we've really evolved our approach tremendously and every year there's new advances, differences, programs, different approaches to what we do with the children. ABA can be very very protocol driven and the, what the staff need to do is very preordained. And the goal is to write down exactly what's going to happen in the session. We believe that there's definitely a room for clinical judgment and in the moment assessment, which is a little different. We try to work with the child who's in front of us and based upon their responses, based upon their, what they do in the session, we're going to make changes and we're going to make adjustments all the time. So we're teaching our staff how to make those judgments, how to make those considerations, not just to follow a protocol. Be goal directed, but how to maximize the progress of the student in the session and how to really, really make good decisions and do good teaching in order to help the student learn the fastest. Examples would be for reinforcement, we'll be assessing continually through our session whether the student likes or doesn't like us reinforcement. We're making clinical judgments when to rotate those reinforcers and you know what kinds of reinforcers to use. We teach our staff when to use prompts effectively based upon the student's history of failure or what they know about the student's acquisition of this task over the past week. What kind of prompt to use based upon you know again the student's performance. So we may base decisions about the student's behavior and we may switch to do different kinds of curriculum during a session to facilitate behavioral momentum or to, to facilitate success in other kinds of tasks or to maintain attention. We're doing behavioral assessment all the time, looking at functions of behavior, purposes of behavior. What does a student want? How is a student's physiological condition today? Is he tired? Has he not had much sleep? Is he less likely to work as hard today? When do we provide reinforcement? We want to be always thinning the schedule of reinforcement. What kind of reinforcement? Is it externally based reinforcers? Do we try to encourage more social reinforcement? These are all decisions our staff may make in the moment with some general guidelines. Many considerations, which makes the kind of therapy we do, by the way, much more complicated and difficult, which is why our staff need a lot more training, because again, we're training them to really think in the moment and make good decisions. But we feel like that this kind of therapy can really help maximize the program of the students. Our approach also utilizes the, as much natural reinforcement as we can. We tr you know, see reinforcement as a paradigm from more primary reinforcers like food, you know, up to more very intrinsic reinforcers like feeling good about learning something, completing something, um, the joy of learning how to do something new. We're really always trying to push our students down that reinforcement paradigm. In our programming, we will spend time developing different kinds of reinforcers. How to make things that previously weren't very reinforcing, reinforcing. How do we get students interested into things that other children are interested in? This is a main drive of our program. We really work with the whole child. We really have to de be developing programs around all things. We have a real emphasis in our program on learning how to learn behavior in terms of teaching students how to become better learners in one-on-one, -on -one, in group, in social settings, in, in natural settings so that we don't have to do as much teaching. So they become better at learning, faster at learning, so that we can accelerate their progress in all curriculum areas. We have a great emphasis on really good behavior emotional regulation, not just speech and academic kinds of areas. We focus a lot on social and we focus a lot on play. We really need to make sure that the program is really balanced and rounded in all areas so that we can really help the students to develop all their skills and capabilities. The other emphasis I'd say is probably on staff training. Staff really require extensive training to be able to know what to do, to be able to make those in-the-moment decisions, 
to be able to really make good clinical judgments takes a lot of experience, takes a lot of training. Here you can see a general picture of you know, what our staff training pyramid looks like in terms of hours and layers. But we invest a huge amount of our time, money and energy in really making sure that our staff are really well equipped in delivering a high quality model. Another area is data collection. Um, in terms of how we collect data is maybe a little different. We are often not doing trial by trial data on every single thing that the student does. Uh, we're not correlating huge books and files for every session of data that's been filled out. We try to look at data, which is a very important component of what we do, in terms of asking questions like, what information do we really need to know? Uh, what's important for us to get? How can we take that data in a way that doesn't interfere as much with the learning of the student and our engagement with the student. Because if every five seconds I've got to turn away from the student and be looking at a sheet and marking down data, that takes away my time from engaging with the student, doing work with the student. So I, I want to get accurate information, I want to get accurate data, but I don't want to do it in a way that it really affects the way that we conduct the session. So those are some of the hallmarks of the Autism Partnership Method.